watching In The Loop on Crystal Park. Today our guest is Council President Hans Reamer. Hans, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks, Crystal. Glad to be here. Let's start from the beginning. Tell us a little bit about how you first got involved in the council and what made you want to become a council member. Well, um, growing up, my parents were parents who, you know, organized the PTA, uh, the Neighborhood Watch. Um, my my dad was involved in the ACLU. My mom uh, was active in the business association. I was I was raised crawling under the table at you know community meetings, and um, I was brought to my first city council meeting probably at the age of five. So uh, it's always been something that has been you know within my understanding and. Um, my, the passion that I have for social justice and social change really comes from my family life growing up and the community that I lived in. And I've always wanted to participate in bringing about a better world for people to live in and a, and a more just community. And um, I've been able to do that at the national level. And thanks to service on the council, I've been able to do that at the community level as well. Well, you recently um, became president of the county council here in Montgomery County. Uh, what are your top three priorities for the coming year as president? Well, this is going to be a challenging year. You know, we have a an uncertain budget environment with uh, federal tax changes that are going to have a big impact here in the county, uh, potentially reducing our tax revenue uh, as higher income uh, individuals are able to effectively reduce their rates and um, we, you know, we're, we're going to be downwind of real pressure that's going to be put on state and local governments by the Congress to uh, you know cut taxes at the expense of what people pay in t at state and local level uh, in, in state and local taxes so you know it's a challenging time on the other hand you know that's that's kind of business as usual we are we've been in a new normal for years now where uh, it's a constrained environment. So the first big challenge is just uh, facilitating a community dialogue in an era of reduced expectations to some extent and, and difficult trade-offs. And that's what makes local government rewarding, frankly, and, and exciting is, is it's real. And you know the impact of the decisions is real. It's immediate. and um, and you know, it makes the, the value of the work so much more important. So, um, you know, again, leading the communities through that process, uh, I would really like to see us uh, continue to invest and in, strengthen our investment in education, you know, through class size, supporting class size reduction, more school construction, and particularly uh, early childhood. You know, we have a real gap in our education system, the ages of zero to five. And so many of our children now come into kindergarten, they're just not ready to learn. And that has a huge impact on the classrooms that they're in. And, and the, you know, try as we might and there's, in subsequent years, it, it's hard to catch people, to catch kids up. So if we can start everyone off, you know, on a kind of more even footing, I think we're going to have a much more successful educational system. So uh, that's a big priority. Um, and you know it's going to be a very exciting year, a bit of a roller coaster of a year, I'll say. We, we've got you know elections for county executive, for county council, of course, an important primary in the governor's, and then ultimately the governor's race. So um, there's going to be a lot going on, a lot of public participation. I would like to do more to uh, open up our deliberative process, make it easier to, for people to you know participate and kind of understand what we're doing and ultimately easier for us to hear from people with better more informed views about what we're doing. Uh, is there anything specific that you hope um, happens to help facilitate what you're saying to to create uh, greater channels of dialogue between the council and the residents? Well um, I am working hard on a new approach to sharing the information that we produce as part of our deliberative process so that people who have an interest in a topic can really instinctively find that information on our website and and then participate in the discussion. So that's something I'm working on. I, I think that we can do a lot better with our public information 
and how we share that. And I'm excited for some changes that we're going to make. Um, in 2018, um, I, you said that it's going to be sort of a roller coaster year. What do you think will be the council's biggest challenge? Well, you know, our challenge is always to allocate our limited resources, you know, in a way that has the most benefit for the community and, you know, supporting education at a time of growing enrollment. That's, that's a huge challenge for us. We have uh, over 5,000 new students in the last two years coming into Montgomery County Public Schools. And, you know, the students that are coming in, many of them, English is not their first language. Uh, you know, they're coming from more disadvantaged backgrounds, so the needs are growing and the resources don't grow as fast as the needs, so you, you've got to be smarter with every dollar. So uh, just continuing to meet the educational challenges is one of our primary jobs. It's, it's what Montgomery County is really all about. And, uh, you know, expanding on that mission to uh, improve Montgomery College and pathways that young people have out of school into careers to to bring more STEM and uh, kind of career connected uh, educational opportunities. You know, these are all things that you know, we've got to do more on. It's, it's what's happening out there in the world around and, uh, and we're making progress. As Council Member Hans, I'm, I'm sure you've spoken to many, many residents about a variety of t topics, but what is something that you would like to let, uh, tell residents uh, or let them know about being on the county council, something that maybe residents don't realize what it takes to be a council member? Well, you know, what residents may not realize is how much of an impact they can have. I, I can't tell you the number of ideas that I have moved forward on because somebody stopped me, you know, and, and shared some thoughts with me, shared some feedback with me. And that's, that's government in Montgomery County. Like it's, it's here for you and it's accessible to you. It's not far away, it's not distant. So, you know, I'm always improving what I do because of the feedback that I'm getting from people. And I, I just hope that everyone appreciates just how short the distance is between what, what's on their mind and what the actions might be of a council member. And I think we're all people who try to be responsive and engaged and, you know, that's what, that's what local government is supposed to be about. So you don't mind it if residents stop you and take a moment of your time? My family doesn't appreciate it if, they're, you know, if they want me to be at home at 6.30 with, with dinner ready, uh, but I don't mind. You know, I, I always feel like some of the best input I get is at the aisle, you know, in the aisle at the grocery store or you know, standing outside you know, a restaurant where I ran into somebody um, or, or by email. I mean, I obviously get a lot of email mm -hmm. um, and I read that and you know I carry that with me I, 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 I gather the input from the community that's that's my job well this next year you will be serving uh, as president of the council and how would you describe your leadership style well I try to be responsive and engaged um, you know to to have a finally great understanding of what the different views are on issues and and how different communities perceive issues. And, um, you know, but I think most, most of all, I, I feel that I'm, I try to be responsive. You know, if people have something that they need from me, I try to be on it and, you know, to share information and to facilitate people's participation. Uh, you yourself, uh, of course, in addition to serving as a council member, are a Montgomery County resident. As a resident, what would you say is your most, um, what are you most proud of as a Montgomery County resident? Well, I, I love living here and I'm proud to live here. And, you know, our community values on issues like immigration, um, you know, support for people from disadvantaged backgrounds, you know, our, our commitment to investing in education, um, to creating opportunity for people, like, that's, that's what life is all about, and that's what government is all about. And we are a community that supports, you know, taking on big challenges. And gosh, that's, that's what I just love about living here as well as working in government here. Um, I think Montgomery County is an amazing place to live. I think it's getting better all the time. You know, it, we have our challenges. You know, we need to constantly make improvements and investments to keep pace with the change that's happening around us. But to me, Montgomery County is just getting better all the time. I, I really, uh, I think we are, are thriving. 
Well, Montgomery County is one of the uh, richest and um, most educated counties in the nation. Is there pressure uh, as a council member on this council to sort of keep up with that pace that you're talking about? You know, there's a lot of affluence in, in the county. There's a lot of need in the county. You know, one of our greatest strengths is the, the breadth of the community and the differences across that community and, and how we're able to bring resources to bear on big challenges. And, you know, fortunately, we have the community support and, and in many ways we have the resources that we need to take on the big challenges facing whether it's the world through environmental policy or the community through education and, and child care. You know, we can get it done here in Montgomery County in a way that I think most people really appreciate. Hans, um, as council president, what is, um, what is the one thing next year that you're most looking forward to, perhaps a, a pet interest, pet project, that you would like to advance next year? Well, I don't, I don't know that I have any pet projects, uh, but um, I really feel that we are behind on investing in early childhood and that you know, it is so expensive now to get access to quality care, whether that's child care for an infant or pre-K for a four or five year old. Uh, you know, it's, it costs more than college. I mean, it's amazing. And think about if it costs $20,000, $25,000 for, you know, your top tier pre-K, well, what does a family have access to if that family's income is only twenty five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000? You know, you got to pay for housing and transportation, and you got to pay for everything else first. So, we are, you know, we're all losing out in this county when families aren't able to provide that that development for their children. You know, and it comes, it's a cost that we all pay because our kids are in the same classroom. All of our kids are in the same classroom, and so there's a benefit that accrues to everyone when we are able to achieve our goals in education more effectively by having kids coming into school more prepared um, and more supported out outside of school, you know, after school programs, summer programs. These things all work together and I think that's the big need. So I've been working hard to expand our early education support, especially for low-income families. Um, and I think, I'm hoping we'll make a big step on that this year as well. We did last year and I hope we make another big step this year. Well, we look forward to seeing what uh, 2018 has in store for you, Hans. Thank you. And uh, we will be watching very closely. We, you have been watching In the Loop. Our guest today has been Council President Hans Reamer. I'm Crystal Park. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you, Crystal.